Welcome to the Ricky Matthews Show, the show that every single day celebrates the men and women who are working so hard to make coastal Mississippi, and Mississippi for that matter, such a great place to live, work, and play. Hey, listen, we uh, we talk a lot about what it takes to be successful and what it takes to bring it into yourself, uh, your own awareness that you need to change or you need to set higher goals or you can set higher goals for yourself. And uh, my friend Frank Willem posted something the other day that really got my attention. And this is really true. You you know this, but uh, but I'll just sh- share some truth with you. And here's what it says. I don't know who said it, but it's uh, it's a good one. No one changes unless they want to. Not if you beg them, not if you shame them, not if you reason, emotion, and tough love them. There's only one thing that makes someone change, their own realization that they need to do it. Isn't that true? I mean, we often do. Someone told me many years ago, I was involved in a leadership program, a year-long leadership program at Northwestern University, and this guy named Robert J. Danzig, I've talked about him before on this show, that he at the time was chairman of the board for the Hearst Corporation, and he said that there is a powerful lubrication to change that comes from pain. And sometimes people, you know, when they find that pain, whether it's in their business or personal life, that's what sort of motivates them to go ahead and and, uh, and realize for themselves that it's time to change. That 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 is for sure. Uh, I saw in one of my newsletters that Cher was born in May of uh, 1946. It, ni- May of 19... 19- Cher now. <laughs> for, I'm looking at... And my next guest, and I can see that they're like, wow, you know, a timeless woman for sure. But she said this, until you're ready to look foolish, you'll never have the possibility of being great. It, gosh, that's also true. That you got to be willing to to be out, to stand out there and take risks and do what's necessary. And sometimes you're not always going to make the right decision or the best decision. But it's true that um, if you really want to be great, you have to be willing to uh, to put yourself out there. And I, I'm really pleased that here on Coast I get the opportunity to meet with so many amazing people, volunteers from the front line, regional leaders, people who really have our best interests at heart. And, you know, they're willing to kind of, you know, put, put their, uh, their necks out there, <laughs> to be honest with you. They're willing to do what is necessary to be a leader and uh, you know, sometimes take the punches in order to help move this this organization, uh, this this community forward. And I'm thrilled to be here to have those conversations. So anyway, just kind of food for thought to start the, the show off today. Now let's shift gears. I'm I'm really pleased. In fact, we should have done this show some time ago, but I'm really pleased we're doing it today. We're going to focus on coastal Mississippi tourism today. This is an incredibly important regional organization. And I'm pleased to have the CEO of Coastal Mississippi, Judy Young, and uh, my friend Greg Cronin, who's been on Coast View before. He's the president of the uh, board, and uh, he's also president of Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, 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 Division of the Citizens Bank. So without any further ado, let me welcome my friends Judy and Greg to Coast View. How are you guys doing? Uh, to, to the Ricky Matthews Show. I still got to get it in my head that it's, <laughs> we're not calling it Coast View anymore. How are y'all doing? Great. We're doing well. Yeah. So, so Judy, you just got back from, uh, you had a long drive yesterday or last night, and you're joining us this morning. Where were you? Well, uh, we were, our team was in San Antonio at IPW, uh, International Travel Tour Operator International Media Show, uh, and we were representing Coastal Mississippi along with Visit Mississippi. It was a great show. Good, good. We'll we'll uh, we'll hear more about that before we get done with our with our conversation today. Uh, Craig Ray at Visit Mississippi is a, a good friend, and he's been on the show many, many, many times. Uh, how how have you been, Greg? What's what's going Great. on in your life these days? Great, uh, all is well, and uh, enjoying uh, some really nice weather that we've had. Some chamber of comp- some coastal Mississippi weather. How about that? Yeah, uh, but uh, everything's going well. So, hey, let's real quick remind people what you do when you're not the chairman of the Board for Coastal Mississippi uh, Tourism. Well, I'm uh, I'm the president of Mississippi Gulf Coast for the Citizens Bank. We're about a $1.4 billion bank uh, and uh, uh, have branches throughout the state of Mississippi and um, uh, little, little, about a 110-year-old bank and uh, had quite a bit of success and uh, just some great customers over the, uh, you know, throughout the state of Mississippi and even outside of the state of Mississippi. But, uh, uh, but we, uh, 
I guess in two, uh, 2019, uh, we joined forces. We uh, The old charter bank that was here that uh, I and a group of uh, friends helped to uh, to start, we, um, we merged with or acquired by uh, the Citizens Bank, and it's been a great partnership. And as I shared with you before, I, people ask me about the bank and many things. And, and the one that I really like to share is their commitment to community. Uh, uh, Citizens Bank has put a lot of, of uh, resources into the community, some of those financial, some of those volunteers. But we have a great team here who, who enjoy being part of Coastal Mississippi, volunteering and and the bank has been very supportive and uh, and actually in, in, encourage us uh, encourages us to to be out on the front lines and to be involved and to help move our, our communities forward. I go back to some of the comments you made at the beginning. That's exact. That's that's kind of who we are. Let's we're going to take some risk, but but uh, the risk pay off. And and if you if you miss one, you just regroup and you and you you try again. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Hey, by the way, did you have the opportunity to attend the Gulf Coast Business Council State of the Coast uh, Symposium? Yeah, and listen, uh, uh, compliments to Jamie Miller and and the team there. They did a fantastic job. I I actually thought that was one of the uh, uh, better programs that I've attended in, in uh, uh, here on the coast. And just can't say enough about the job Jamie's doing. And and uh, and appreciate the work Ashley did while, while he was there. But uh, it's been been fun to watch Jamie kind of take those reins and and uh, and as we all want to, he's going to move things forward and uh, you know that's that's part of the it's part of what we do. And those that we follow, uh, we always try to do a little bit better. And and those that follow us, I'm always hopeful that they'll do you know, they'll they'll do better. And uh, so, uh, but I thought it was a great uh, I, I thought it was a great day uh, and, and a, a really good program. And again, just compliments to Jamie and his team for putting that all together. And um, uh, Peter was a, is a great speaker. And uh, back, uh, he's, he's as entertaining in the speaking as he is in terms of his, uh, <laughs> of his, of his information that he's bringing to you. So. Yeah. You're talking about Peter Raschuti <clears throat> who came over here from Tulane. And what someone told me was that it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, economics is not something that usually as it can be funny, but he puts such a, uh, a humorous edge to it all. It makes it entertaining. And you also learn at the same time. So that was really good. And by the way, his message was terrific, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it it really was. And I thought both he and Jamie, you know, his message his message was that uh, or part of the takeaway that I that I came with is that you know is that our economy is doing well, and uh, and especially in this region, we're doing well. And then. Uh, Jamie kind of backed that up with uh, not to get into some boring stuff like sales tax and things like that, but it was interesting to see that all of our communities along the Gulf Coast are ahead of where they were, and I, I think it's just a compliment. It's a compliment to leadership in a number of different places, but uh, but I but I thought it was a really very. Po- I, I think everybody left there feeling good and feeling positive about coastal Mississippi uh, and our region, uh, even yeah. bringing in the. New Orleans and Mobile and the and the other states into this Gulf Coast region, we're we're doing well, and we're seeing that in our bank. I, you know, our numbers are up. Um, uh, uh, we people ask me all the time, have things slowed down? And and that they may have they may have slowed a little, but but there is still a lot of commerce that's going on, and people are still looking at projects, and and there's a lot of energy. I, I think that's what I would probably say the most. There's just a lot of energy that's still on this coast, and and entrepreneurs and businesses that are uh, wanting to to do things to better the coast and, and opportunities that they find that are that are good for uh, good for them. Hey, listen, real quick uh, comment about Jamie. Um, he's been on the show several times already. I've, I've known him for a long time, had the opportunity to work with him after Katrina when I led the oil recovery planning efforts for Governor Riley in Alabama. Jamie actually came over and worked with one of our teams and he was terrific, absolutely terrific. Um, but through all those processes, and of course, working at the Department of Marine Resources and then his work at MDA, all that really positioned him so well to take this leadership role. And, you know, he and I have discussed this on the show, but what's really important about the state of the, the coast is that, you know, as you know, you whether you're talking about the business or a set of communities, that you can't go to where you want to go if you don't know where you are now. So having this real honest discussion about where successes are, maybe where some opportunities might be for improvement is really key. And I think the, the, the state of the coast economy 
uh, and the data that that surrounds that will be critical to us as we go forward. And I'm, I'm I'm thrilled that the business council continues to play such a key role. I know you've been active, and it's important to you as well. But um, you know, it takes it takes a lot of organizations like that, and Coastal Mississippi Tourism, and so many other organizations coming together. Uh, to make a community like ours tick, and you've you've seen it over and over again, haven't you? I have, and, and listen, one of the first things Jamie did, he he reached out to a lot of us, uh, but he reached out to Coastal Mississippi in terms of partnership and how we can work together and ideas and everything, and so, uh, and that's what makes uh, that that's what makes Coastal Mississippi such a great place to to be. It, it really does. Hey, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation. Uh, about Coastal Mississippi Tourism with uh, CEO uh, Judy Young and Board Chairman Greg Cronin. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to my show. I appreciate you being here today, whether you're watching us on 103.1 or on Facebook or YouTube or your favorite podcast. We really appreciate you tuning in and paying attention. I get so much feedback from this show. It's it's really incredible. And Greg, when we change the name of the show, you may have heard this. I know you're a regular listener, but over 3,000 people engaged in the post when we said we were changing the name of the, of the, of the show. So it, it, it still blows my mind, uh, the number of people who are paying attention because they're with me. They're, they're, we're standing together celebrating people like you and uh, and Judy and um, I'm thrilled to be here to be able to do this in retirement. That is for sure. But hey, listen, Coast of Mississippi for people who have not paid close attention to this is a really sort of like the one of the most important, certainly one of the first efforts to do a regional effort. So it's a a collaboration between Hancock and Jackson and Harrison County. Uh, one of the major recommendations we made coming out of the Governor's Commission on Recovery, Rebuilding, and Renewal after Hurricane Katrina took a little bit of time to get it done. We got it done. And um, to to run an organization like 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 uh, like Judy runs now on the day to day basis as uh, as the CEO and and Greg as the chairman, it it, it requires an enormous amount of communicating. I mean, because the point that Jamie made at the at the uh, state of the coast economy, you know, we're we're twelve municipalities, three counties, and one big big uh, um, uh, region. But you think about the the number of uh, of legislators, both federal and state. You think about the number of mayors and city council members and board of supervisors meeting members. And whoo, buddy, it takes a lot to make a community like ours tick. And so when you have a regional organization like this, the amount of communicating that it takes to keep everyone aligned is I can't say enough about that. I mean, really, I'll come to you first, Greg, and you can comment about this, and then we'll do the same with you, Judy. And then we'll, we're going to take a step back, Judy, and talk a little bit more about where you come from. But communication is the name of the game, isn't it, Greg? It is. Uh, you know, you you mentioned the talk about the regionalism, and one of the things that we've we've put a, a, a lot of attention to is is the fact that we want to be an example of what regionalism can do, the success that can be achieved through regionalism and everything. And I'm reminded early on as, uh, as I came on the board and Judy and I were first beginning to work with each other, we uh, we had a legislative, we had a breakfast for the legislators and they came and they visit. We uh, talked, Judy laid out a, uh, uh, a game plan in terms of where we were going with coast, with coastal Mississippi. But one of the things that we shared with them is that we want to, and I think I used the word poster child. I'm not sure that's the best word to use, but but we do want to be the example of what regionalism can achieve and, and how regionalism can work and bring everybody together. And and uh, you know, I, I'll go to our board. Our our you know our, our board has pulled together and and um, uh, you know we 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 truly talk about coastal Mississippi in terms of the regionalism. From time to time, we will talk about Harrison County or Jackson County or Hancock County, maybe Bay St. Louis, maybe Ocean Springs, maybe Biloxi. But at the end of the day, it always comes back together about what's good for the coast and what's good for the region. And so uh, one of the things that I'm really proud of is the is I think we are on the right track in terms of being that example uh, for the state and for our region and for those that are watching in terms of how regionalism can work and the success that it can bring to our community. Well, I give Craig, Greg, I give you a lot of credit as the chairman of the board during some during some uh, challenging times. 
of settling things down and getting us on the right track. And I know it took, man, it took a team effort. I get that. A lot of people working together. And, uh, you know, Nat and Judy, you're, you've come on the scene here. I have over 20 years of experience. Speak to the point first about the importance of communication. And then we'll, we'll, we'll again, we'll take a step back and, and learn a little bit more about where you come from. Well, you know, um, thanks for having me on the show. I, I heard a speaker when I first got here in an awards show you may be familiar with uh, that, that I took to heart where I needed to get some reps in before I came on his show. So thanks for letting me have time to get my reps in. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you know, words words can inspire. They can motivate and they can uplift. And and the lack of words is a void that someone else is going to fill for you. So making sure that your communication is as comprehensive as it can be without being overwhelming. I mean, everyone's inboxes are full. Everyone's choice of how they get the news is varied. So it takes a lot of um, consistent communication with your commissioners and your supervisors to really have them be able to champion uh, the work and the regionalism that we're, we're really trying to get across because visitors don't recognize city limit lines, county lines. Um, they're really putting their, their itineraries together by experienced base assets. And everyone has ecotourism in each one of their counties. A, a visitor doesn't care what county it is in. So we need to package that up, serve it up to them so that the region is easily navigated. Well, Judy, after, after Hurricane Katrina, not five, listen, literally five weeks after Hurricane Katrina, the, the governor's commission had been formed, and we had reached out to Andreas Duani, who is the father of new urbanism, and we had charrettes, these, ar these architectural mm -hmm. brainstorming sessions for each of the communities. And we had over 100 architects and planners from around the world. We, the Prince of Wales Foundation sent two architects to, to join us. It was a very, very significant thing. And in the history of architecture, no one could find where anything like that had ever been attempted, where you had all these municipalities doing brainstorming sessions simultaneously. But the work was really important because it wasn't just about saying, okay, we've, we've been devastated. What are some of the possibilities as we move forward, taking into account things like new families of mapping and things like this, it was important for those reasons to restore hope, to give people an opportunity to see that there is a way for us to get through this mess. But it was also important in terms of giving Haley Barber the, the tools he needed uh, in Congress as he began to think about the billions of dollars that we were going to need to, to build the infrastructure that would enable the kind of planning that we were doing. And I came to appreciate this. Andreas, in fact, I have a, I have a, uh, I'm looking at it actually. So it's a frame piece and the name of the frame piece is a sense of place. Andreas, I spent. I went to school on new urbanism, but more importantly, I went to school on this whole notion of what it means to build a sense of place. And I came to appreciate that Coastal Mississippi's this collection of communities, each with its own unique sense of place. And so for a tourist who comes here to experience Bay St. Louis and be encouraged by people in Bay St. Louis, have you been to Ocean Springs? You got to go check it out while you're here. And people from Ocean Springs to say, have you been to Biloxi to the Ore Museum? And I could continue sort of this iteration of how we want to how we want to integrate people into coastal Mississippi. But the fact that we have all these unique experiences, each so unique in its own regard, is what makes this place so darn special. I mean, that's why cruising the coast is so unique in America and continues to be, you know, uh, uh, you know the top car show in, in America by USA Today because of that. Um, we, it's just so unique. But because of that, also, there's a lot of complexity to it, and there are a lot of stakeholders holders involved in it. Then you add the gaming industry to it and the importance of, of this hospitality industry to the entire state of Mississippi. So so goes our so goes our hospitality, so goes Mississippi. So goes Mississippi coastal Mississippi's economy. So goes Mississippi. So we're critical to the rest of the state in more ways than we have time to even discuss now. So you know when you got hired into this position, you had 20 years of experience. So why don't you give people a sense of where you came from? Well, I came from uh, Central Texas, the Hill Country, and um, our community had dealt with uh, some pretty severe natural disasters as well. But uh, those aside, I'm a, I'm a water gal, and uh, I, I love being around in on 
skiing, whatever it is, water gal. Um, and I kind of started in tourism at the ripe age of three with, uh, with an, uh, an international award for being the youngest age group swimmer in, at that point, the world, and got to open the LBJ Ranch uh, uh, pool and be on TV. And, and uh, so travel, hospitality, and tourism started for me obviously at a young age. My mom was in it, um, got the first visitor center for our community. So it's really kind of part of me. And I worked with 32 counties on Hill Country Tourism Board. And then I chaired uh, the Texas Tourism Commission for Governor Bush. So regionalism is not new for me. Um, being in this type of regional organization with the volume of dynamic attractions and tourism opportunities is, uh, it's truly a blessing. I mean, it's an abundance of riches that uh, we just got to put our head down and work really hard to be, uh, I won't say the poster child. I think you said to be the best in the <laughs> yeah. U.S., Greg. So big challenge. You're one. Yeah. Hey, so so all that's terrific and, and, and you know, officially welcome to Coastal Mississippi, even though you've been here for a while now. Uh, I tell you what, I didn't realize we we're at the end of the segment. Just I have a quick comment about um, something you said that spurred a thought, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how things are going these days. The team that you're building, uh, I was so thrilled to see Kendra Simpson join your team. Boy, I'm a fan of hers, and I hated to see her lead the, the aquarium, but she's a great addition to your team. When we come back, we'll continue to have a conversation with Judy Young, CEO of Coastal Mississippi, and Greg Cronin, the chairman of the board. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I have Judy Young, CEO of Coastal Mississippi, and Greg Cronin, who is actually the chairman of the board. He's a volunteer leader, and uh, he has a day job as president of a division for a bank. So uh, you know that's what that's what we do, Greg. Everybody everybody pitches in and fills important leadership gaps in this community. And there's so much so so much for volunteer leaders to do. Hey, let me come back. Uh, something that you said, Judy. I just wanted to to get your reaction to this. And Greg, you'll you'll appreciate this too. And I'll get your reaction to it as well. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about our our tourism? This sort of the way I came to think about it is that it's kind of hard to compare us with other communities because in some respects, we're kind of small, but in other respects, we're kind of big. You know, when you look at gaming revenue and things like that. So it's a it's a hard thing to say, how do you compare our market to other markets? What, what, what are, if you're benchmarking, how do you do that? Because actually it's probably the most unique community like it in America. Now, one of the things that we thought about a lot, uh, John Harrison and myself and others after, after the storm, John was involved in the tourism effort as well. And uh, when I, in fact, when I left uh, to go to Alabama, John actually uh, took over uh, the chairmanship of tourism for the business council, which was pushing forward a lot of the recommendations from the governor's commission. But we said, okay, we what would it take for us to be a tier one destination resort? Now think of Las Vegas, for example, a tier one destination resort. We may not actually ever be a tier one destination resort, but how we ev- a- evaluate that is going to be actually important to how how far along that continuum we can get. And so we said, we got to continue the construction at the Gupport Airport, which, as most of us know, was was beginning when Katrina hit, and we had to be all in on that. We had to continue the construction at uh, the uh, Coast Coliseum Convention uh, Center. You know, the convention center was something we were talking about, and and we went forward with in a big way. We have to be focused on building as many hotel rooms as we can get, you know, preferably close to the convention center, still an ongoing conversation. And then we have to have attractions, a wide range of attractions. Certainly casinos are part of that, but then non-gaming, evolution, family entertainment, really, really important as well. Uh, so we laid out that framework for doing it. I'm sure there are other as- aspects to it as well. But in, on all those fronts, we've done fairly well. And so we just need to keep adding to that. When you when you go to somewhere like where you were over the past few days, comparing yourselves to other markets, you, you buy into what I'm saying, that it's kind of hard to find where to put us, isn't it? It is. Um, you know, just the volume and diversity of, attractions and cultural and eco is uh, quite an anomaly in any regionalism. It's, it's 
it's more similar somewhat to the provincial um, type of tourism districts and regions that they do in Canada. And so for my perspective, the comparisons really to um, in some international destinations that have done this and done it for a while is probably the best uh, opportunity to reach out for best practices, what, what to pursue, what to not pursue. But you talked a lot about development and infrastructure and, and making the connection to economic development and tourism is essential. Uh, whether we have byways, whether we have great infrastructure for those great attractions, if we're going to expand them, retain them, um, the marriage between economic development and tourism is critical. Uh, in addition, we're also the front door to economic development. The ones that are challenged and charged with marketing and attracting folks to this sense of place, uh, 365, uh, all year long, and we're out there all the time. So, we're the front door. Folks Google us when they're a prospect for an industrial relocation, and we want what will get served up to them to be positive and representative of the great hospitality in our area. Wow, it's well, it's well put. It's well put. So I think one of the it's, it, with that uniqueness comes a competitive advantage in finding how we position that Josh Morgan I don't know if you know him I should introduce you to him but he's a top hurricane chaser in the world he's from LA but he's as a result of the pandemic he got introduced to Hancock County and he's building a house in Hancock County Ch chases storms all over the world he's on weather nation he's got a reality TV show as well but very very popular in in the in sort of the hurricane uh, universe and um, he, he, and by the way, he's, his specialty is he has a company called Symblaze, and his specialty is branding. That's what, and he has some of the largest companies in America that he that he has responsibility for. It's very, he's very, very smart and very creative. But when he hears that notion of the secret coast, Mississippi Gulf Coast, the secret, coast, he loves it. He loves it because he says it speaks to his discovery, what the discovery that he made personally that made him ultimately decide to invest in coastal Mississippi. Um, but, you know, it, it, you know, to some extent, it's not as secret as it needs to be. But if you look at the masses in America, it's still secret. And the reality is we have an opportunity, a continual opportunity to push sort of that competitive advantage, don't we? We do. Um, you know, there's a lot of care and keeping that's got to go on for that competitive advantage to be maintained. Uh, having a sense of place, we're as a region at a point where we have really great assets, and now we need to build out the rest of the sense of place. The wayfinding, the landscaping, those things that you do that create an environment that really mm -hmm. may not be so tangible as an asset, but are critical to um, the market that you're trying to serve. And if you're trying to move the needle towards tier one, those elements have to happen. And you may not see an immediate return, but you've got to put the continuity there. And we have some great leadership in the region that's now looking at the grant opportunities that we have and collectively working on connectivity and sense of place and those elements. That's huge. Uh, yeah. For everybody to get on the same page for those grant applications that are out there, we shouldn't be working. We try to work, not work in silos here. here. Yeah. We'd like, we're very encouraged by the counties and the mayors communicating and not working so much in those silos either. Yeah, I think I think that's that's really a key. And boy, we're really gifted right now in the in the crop of mayors we have across coastal Mississippi. All had success in their real lives, and now they're giving back to the communities that they love. And almost to a person, it's just that that fits their their description. Julian Rankin, do you know Julian from I the? I do. Yeah, Julian. Uh, I, you know, I'm a, I came, I've had, I've worked in media for my entire career, 16 years as a CEO. I've had Pulitzer Prize winning editors and writers working f with me. And uh, I, I, I can see a wordsmith when I see him. And Julian is probably one of the most gifted wordsmiths I know when it comes to understanding the relationship between the landscapes of this beautiful place and what connects to people and their souls and their, and their what connects to their hearts. Gosh, is he 
articulate in the way he does that. So I'm glad to hear that you've connected with Julian because he is a, an amazing selfless leader in coastal Mississippi. I can't spend enough time with him on my show. <laughs> hey, Greg, coming over to you real quick. You heard all those conversations about how we are unique, man, we're unique in America. I, I think it's interesting that you bring up um, we're, that we're more like maybe Canada in some respects in the way they might subdivide themselves. But 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 it's true. And, and embedded in that is real opportunity for us, isn't it, Greg? Oh, there he is. I, you know, I, as I listen, a couple of things. One is uh, <clears throat> probably in my background, I come from more of an economic development background, being in the banking business. And then I've had the opportunity to work with George Freeland and his board for a number of years in economic development uh, and even at the state level, some and everything. And, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, tourism plays a significant role in our success of economic development uh, in terms of quality of life, uh, so many things that 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 uh, we have here. And I think the diversity of what we have here, you know, we have the casinos, I guess, is maybe that anchor in terms of, of what brings a lot of people to the coast. And we have great partners, the airport we mentioned and things like that. But, you know, any given weekend, you look along the coast and the diversity uh, Moss Point recently had a really successful fishing tournament and uh, Ocean Springs and Pascagoula have some really neat festivals that they do uh, during the year. You come over to Biloxi and Gulfport, and I'm going to leave somebody out, so I'm probably going to get in trouble here when, I, when this is all done. But, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Harrison County, as we've all acknowledged, they're, they're, they lead this effort in tourism and, and uh, not to take anything away from Hancock and Jackson, but we have those, and then and what what Bay St. Louis? I you know I I was in Destin uh, last weekend, and and I had three uh, for a banking convention. I know it sounds like a lot of fun when you put all a bunch of bankers together like that, but <laughs> one of the things that did come away, I bet I bet I was asked about Bay St. Louis three or four times, probably more, and folks who had were starting to kind of learn a little bit about what was going on in Bay St. Louis. Uh, one of the bankers is building a house there, a little, a little home, uh, uh, a little place for their, instead of going to Alabama and going, they're, they're building in Bay St. Louis. And so, you know, when you, when you look at the diversity of all this along the coast, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting, and it's a, it's, and it's, it's a great way to win too. It is a great way to win. <laughs> that is for sure. Hey, when we come back, <clears throat> we'll co we'll enjoy the final segment with uh, Judy Young, for the CEO of Coastal Mississippi, and uh, Greg Cronin, the chairman of the board. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. The point that Greg Cronin was making when we went to break about the diversity of festivals and events and Man, it's incredible. And I love when I, you know, when I visit with the mayors, you know, every single mayor, you know, something's going on in every downtown. There's an incredible revitalization happening in Pascagoula. I love what the mayor of Moss Point and his vision for this river city in Moss Point. We all know about Ocean Springs. We see the good progress being made in Gautier. Like you, Greg, I could go to every single city and there's something amazing happening to bring life back to downtown. And this sense of place that is that, you know, when you have people and people who live there and you have vibrancy and restaurants and, you know, it just builds off of each other. You can't even buy commercial land right now in downtown Biloxi. That's so much going on there. So all this plays into that. And you get the opportunity, uh, Judy, to sell that to the world. And you've built, you know, I mentioned Kendra Simpson a few minutes ago, but you've, uh, you've built a team. Tell me about your team and uh, tell me about how important it is what you do for, to this economy. We are uh, really, really, really excited to have a uh, a great team. We have just a few more positions and we'll be fully staffed as an organization for the first time since 2019. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like the evolution of the coast. The evolution of coastal Mississippi has taken and grown to a point where we are a uh, world-class destination management organization. We do all the marketing, advertising, public relations, media relations, group sales, convention sales, sports sales, Public, uh, it just it's it's a huge um, program of work for a pretty lean, mean staff, uh, very talented. But uh, we we kind of 
took our marching orders from uh, Chairman Cronin to heart, where he said we're just going to put our head down and get to work because there's a lot of work to do. And uh, it's quite uh, an honor and a responsibility to support an industry that employs over 25,000 of our friends and neighbors. Wow. I mean, that, that's yeah. significant in the, you know, the three legs of the stool for economic development, making sure that everybody has those jobs and that those are growing and doing well and increasing their wages and benefits. And, um, you know, we don't take that lightly. And you talk about the 25,000. One of the things I, I, I spoke a lot in meetings for the governor's commission and, and other meetings that Governor Barber wanted me to be involved in about this this real drive we had after Hurricane Katrina to get casino workers back to work. We had to get them a place to stay, had to get their kids back in school, and had to get them, you know, the, the dockside uh, gaming world changed to inland gaming so that we, they could they could invest what turns out to be billions back into their their organizations. But one of the points I made, so you coming back to 25,000 people employed for every person employed directly in the industry, it's probably another one or two people that are, that are supporting that in some way or another. So there was, so the multiplier effect of tourism, the hospitality mm -hmm. sector for coastal Mississippi, gosh, again, it's important to us. It's important to each and every individual that somehow benefits from that economically. But, but Greg, it's important to the state, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. Uh, actually, for uh, just some st uh, statistics, uh, one dollar uh, one dollar spend back is represents fifty eight dollars back to uh, uh, back to coastal Mississippi, and then on top of that, if you look at the tax base in terms of what tourism, the Gulf Coast or coastal Mississippi represents about 30% of the total tourism in the state of Mississippi. So we, um, you know, there's a, to use the train analogy, we're the locomotive that's pulling that train. And, um, and, and, uh, and, and I, I think we're, you know, we, we're, we're enjoying a lot of success as we do that, but, but, but our role here and Judy's role and Judy's team and, and, and as, as, as the cities and, counties of this uh, Gulf Coast, we're, uh, we play a big part in that. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, Judy, we're, we're almost out of time, but when you, when you look at the numbers, you have to be pleased about where we are. It's outstanding. And when you put uh, overnight trip and day trip together, it's just under a $16 billion economic impact. Uh, it's It's tremendous. And Without that impact, the community itself doesn't get to enjoy the depth of dining options that we have, the attractions that we have. Uh, it really does expand the locals' ability to enjoy some really world-class opportunities, as well as keeping their tax burden lower than they could probably imagine. I mean, for the state of Mississippi, we actually generate almost 37% of the tax revenue generated by tourism for the state. I can't imagine us taking a 30% plus tax hit on yeah. our local taxes to overcome that. So huge dollars, billions in spending, 25,000 plus employees. Uh, there's a lot of Southern hospitality, coastal characters in terms of endearment that make us different. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited that this show it has that, you know, people across the state have access to this show because we can constantly remind them that this is an economic engine. We don't say that in a competitive way. We say that as a sense of reality. And it's important to the rest of the state if after, for example, a storm, we don't bounce back quickly. We're in, we're, the state's in trouble, and we have to have their support. We're all in this together, man. We're all in this together. Hey, listen, it has been a pleasure to visit with you, too. And, I, Judy, I look forward to visiting more as time goes on. But this has been Judy Young, the CEO of Coastal Mississippi Tourism, and Greg Cronin, the chairman of the board. And uh, can't wait till next time. It was, it, was, it was a pleasure to spend time with both of you.